Thank you, Jim, for having me uh, here. My name is Vishal Shukla. I'm a co-founder and CEO of Avis Network. And today I'm delighted to talk about our latest product, Network Copilot, uh, and talk about uh, you know, the, the full stack which Avis has, which call it Networking 3.0. So let me sure. jump into it right away. So let's start with the discussion on, you know, why Gen, Gen AI is important in your network uh, and essentially why now is the right time. So as we are talking to a lot of analysts and I'm, I'm, I'm personally talking to a lot of, uh, uh, you know, executives, uh, 2024 is, is kind of a pivotal year in, in introducing generative AI in their infrastructure. Uh, it's essentially, uh, you know, important. Uh, if you want to become tomorrow's leader for generative AI, you have to kind of start today. And, and there is also other thing, which is like generative AI in 2023 had been in a research mode. And now is the year for essentially putting it towards the use and finding the use cases. So it's a right time to essentially start uh, on generative AI. Now, when we talk about generative AI, how do we deploy it in, in, in our networks and everything, right? So essentially when we talk to a uh, lot of uh, customers and within our own uh, architectural team, there are five elements which needs to be there for a, a system which lets you deploy generative AI in your uh, infrastructure for using it the way it should be used, right? So the first thing first is that it should be able to uh, leverage any LLM. As you know, the LLMs are uh, getting innovated at a light speed, right? Every month there is a new LLM coming in which is faster and better and using lesser and lesser resources. So the system has to be built in to leverage any LLM, right? Now, the second thing is that whatever that system is needs to be enterprise ready. It should, uh, you know, have the have the security policies built in, RBAC built in, and, and it should be uh, uh, able to be compliant uh, for the enterprise, uh, uh, you know, uh, the policies, right? Then it should be easily integratable. There should not be any rip and replace and, you know, putting agent here and there, those kind of things. It should be just running calmly on a system uh, without disrupting anything which is uh, going on in the network. The fourth one is essentially it should not cost arm and length, right? It should be something with which customers can start uh, and essentially grow uh, as they grow. Uh, and the fifth one, the last one, which is very important that whatever you do, you should not be dependent on a single kind of a vendor. And when I say vendor, it's not just the networking vendor, it's also the vendor who is providing this, this system and, and, and or any application. And the most important thing is that the customer should have the full control and access for their data. So it should be very open system, which is designed to train a LLM, but still keeping the data in control of the customer for the privacy reason and, and, and other reasons, and essentially can, can provide them just the functionality for using generative AI. So essentially this is the system uh, which we believe uh, will help. Now there is a, another dimension and that dimension is very important. So yeah, now you have a system, but how are you going to use it, right? I mean, why, why should we, uh, uh, you know, start using generative AI? So let me talk in general, uh, outside of the context of Network Copilot on where generative AI is taking this world and what's gonna happen with four different uh, users, which we believe are the prime users uh, uh, who influences the network, right? So number one is the executive who essentially, uh, you know, uh, looks for the network, looks for the future, the strategy, future proof, uh, uh, and the innovation driven things in their network. So today, if they wanna do any decision, if they wanna make any decision, they have to ask the information from their team and they essentially then go uh, in iterative mode to essentially get to a point where they can make some decision. So that is how it happens today. A lot of meetings, a lot of back and forth and all these things. In future, I think the executives will be able to ask the high level questions uh, from their AI assistant, in this case, Copilot, uh, and essentially be able to uh, be equipped with asking the right question from their team, right? Uh, which significantly cutting down on the back and forth and the iterations and essentially going straight to the point and making the decision. So that's what, you know, the executive's jobs will become easy when the AI will come into the picture. Now let's talk about the network engineers, right? Their job, the architect's job is to look for the next generation of the architecture, uh, then selection of the right vendors, the right technology, doing the TOC analysis, uh, TCO analysis and everything. And the way they do it today is based on the past knowledge, understanding from, you know, learning from the vendors, going to the events, and understanding from their peers. Then they do a POC, proof of concept, manually do it, and then they compare the vendor and do the TCO analysis. How it's gonna be happening in future is that you should be able to get the insight by just simply ask, asking a question in your network that, hey, predict me how my network will be 
uh, how much my bandwidth will be used in future based on two years of the usage and which applications will actually use that, right? So here you go, one of the problems solved right there, you can just ask a question, you get the answer. Then, because this LLM is gonna learn from internet also, if you give it the internet access, then you can actually ask the industry trends. You can ask for the pros and cons for a particular design. You can actually also do the proof of concept in a simulated manner because, because in Network Copilot from Avis, we hook it up uh, with the other networking 3.0 stack elements, which I will go through in a minute, right? And then you can also do a very good TCO analysis uh, with which you can uh, present the data in a very nicer form. Again, saving you tons of time, educating you what's happening in the industry. Then talk about network operators. Now, today, if you look at how the network operations happens, it is template driven. Template driven for the uh, orchestration or the day two operation and template driven for your uh, dashboards for essentially observability, right? So everything is template driven. Either it is Ansible, YAML files or CLI driven. That's one kind of template to manage your fabric. And then for the observability, you have templates, my CPU utilization, BGP uh, numbers and all these kind of things, right? The future is essentially generating these templates. And that's what co-pilots have proven in 2023 for the cloud and other applications. You should be able to generate your own infrastructure as a code on the fly. You should be able to create the APIs on the fly. On the, on the, on the fly. And you should also be able to generate the observability dashboards on the fly because think of it observability today if you want a complex answer you have to correlate three different dashboards and manually do the job to find out that okay what you are looking for probably doing a rca root cause analysis in future you ask the question and then you can ask network copilot hey generate me the graph and it will give you the graph on the fly on the context on which you are asking that's the future in procurement is another one right i mean we, we are we are selling our stuff today and we see that how the procurement and the finance guys they negotiate, they negotiate on the price point only, but they don't have the data, exactly data on their fingertips. Within five seconds, they ask the question for a particular vendor, what was the quality last, last year and how much the operational cost they have spent to take care of that quality, which essentially should be taken care into the account when they negotiate, right? So a data-driven negotiation, that's what the generative AI will enable for future. So essentially what we are making is a tool for future and the leaders, uh, you know, the, the prominent leaders in the industry are looking for investing in this technology in a very open source uh, matter so that, you know, they are, they are introducing a technology, not a product per se, right? Moving on, this is how it looks like, right? Uh, so basically you can, uh, uh, you can pre-train network co-pilot with your business policies. Now business policies for network business policies for one customer may be different for another customer. So let's say the first customer says, 80% of CPU and 80% of utilization for application A is okay for me. Customer B may say that, okay, no, I, my network cannot go more than 60% and I want to make sure that this application gets all my bandwidth, right? So these are two different use cases, right? Two different contexts. So the way network copilot work is that you can pre-train the model on what is the expectation from your networks. And that is that could be a XLS, that could be a document, a PDF file or anything like that. Once you have that uh, understanding made in the network copilot, then you attach it with the exact operational data of your network and continuously train it. And then you can ask a question, is my network okay? So it will give you the answer for that okay as defined by customer A. If that network is running at 70%, it will say okay because your contextual uh, training you have done is for 80%. For customer B, it will tell you it's not okay because the contextual training was done for 60%. So you see, we have brought in not just the, you know, a simple AI ops kind of a thing. We have brought in the customer expectation in there and threw in the internet angle so that customers can also ask that where my network is as compared to the internet. Uh, you know, just search the internet and tell me the pros and cons of what I'm doing is better or not, right? This is the future is where it, it, it should go towards, right? Now coming uh, to the last slide, the vision, right? Where it fits in the Avis network uh, product portfolio. So, you know, with, with Network Copilot, we are also launching Networking 3.0 stack, uh, which we have completed our vision here. Mm -hmm. And now it's, it's gonna grow uh, into, into the same uh, framework. So essentially, if you think of networks today, you have Sonic solution, which is uh, very less uh, deployments out there, but then you have also non-Sonic solution, which is pretty much 98%, 95 or whatever percent, right? 
but they are networks essentially end of the day right so how do you let customers uh, look at them as as networks right so you basically provide first of all a network aware stack which can not only do the orchestration observability performance monitoring you know the the incident response system by anomaly detection can make your ai fabric with rocky and all these kind of things uh you know this is this is what once stand for and this is what we launched uh you know one and a half year back the second product uh, of this stack is essentially the packet broker, which essentially have the application level uh, data because now it is a packet broker, you see. So it can go into your application and, and see a lot of things in there. Now, if you put together this network aware stack and the application aware stack, you have tons of amounts of data, right? You have the network data, which is telling you about your network control plane, the network platform, the ASIC, the NOS, all what you want to know about your network and then you have the application which tells that what is happening inside those wires which applications are running on if you merge them both then essentially you can create an open networking enterprise data lake which is customer defined customer owned in whatever ways they want to own it can also tap into your existing cloud networks which is aws uh, uh, azure or google cloud and pull in the data which is equivalent to this network or the application normalize it so that now you have a data lake which can now be used for training generative AI models or also can connect seamlessly into a lot of applications which requires data, right? So essentially what we are doing by networking 3.0 stack, we are enabling the networks to be open. We are connecting them with the cloud. So essentially, you know, the AWS, GCP and Azure, all the applications running the networks, they can be seen in the uh, unanimous way, right? And then you have the AI first approach because you know data is essentially providing uh, you the way to train the models and use ai for the use cases right and essentially from the benefits point of view customers can get the choices the control and then with them a tons of cost savings this is the customer benefit which will come out of this stack right so i'll stop here uh, if you want to know more uh, just connect with us uh, at any given point of time and we'll love to walk you through this <music>